Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this afternoon, distraught Denise believes headless body belongs to missing aunt. Brittany Graham's worst affairs were realized yesterday when she found the headless decomposing body of a woman who she strongly believes is her aunt, Suzette Clark, who went missing last Thursday. Me did in shock. My heart start race. Me did I wonder if a she, what me know her clothes. Me know say a she. Clark's a grief stricken 23 year old Denise, who she raised like a daughter since age two, told her the news yesterday. Clark, a 52 year old forklift operator of South Haven Scheme in St. Thomas, was reported missing on Sunday after leaving home early Thursday morning for work. On Thursday, the police were alerted to the headless body of a woman in bushes near the shore in South Haven with her head nearby. The Yellows police are yet to confirm the identity of the body. However, Graham is convinced that the body belongs to her aunt. Recalling the terrifying moment when she found the body, Clark said, when she went missing, me and my cousin decided that we were going to check by the seaside to see if we see any sign of anything because we were thinking that maybe something had happened to her because that is not like her. So we were checking along the seaside and I was walking at the top where the grasses and the bushes are and I found the body. Continuing, Graham said, me did frighten. Me never really see everything at once. Me just see the skull, but me did go in a shock. She recalled seeing blood on the shirt but it believes that the woman was killed elsewhere. Asked how she was sure that the body was that of her aunt, she said, I know her clothes, her watch, her hat, and the vest that she wears to work. Every day she wears the vest over her clothes, and she always wears a hat. It might be a different color, but she always wears a hat. Graham said she was unable to recognize her aunt by her facial features as the head was decomposing. According to her, the rest of her family members are in shambles and questioning why someone would kill her aunt. Graham said she too was baffled as to why her aunt would be killed and was hoping for answers. To be honest, she is not the type of person who would trouble anybody. She does not linger anywhere. She just go to work and back home. She not talk to people. She not have much friend. You can count on one hand the friends that she have. She explained that Clark left home on Thursday around 3 a.m. for work, but she did not make it there. Clark said she was alerted to her aunt's disappearance after her manager called on Saturday, making inquiries when she failed to turn up for work. The niece said she contacted the taxi driver who usually transported her aunt and was told that she had confirmed the pickup for Thursday morning, but it never showed. He was the one that says he called her that morning to tell her that he was on his way, and she said okay, but when he reached at the top of the road, he noticed that she was not there, but he kept calling her and not getting her, so he drove down and still did not see her, but passengers started to complain and he had to leave, she recalled. Clark's supervisor, when contacted, said he and her colleagues were hoping for the best and were shocked to hear of the outcome. He described Clark as the company's top performer. She was the best worker. There's this thing that we do every month for the top worker. And me can close my eyes and know that she go get it. Even when she miss couple days, she come out on top same way. If me have 10 more of her, it would be ideal. The Jamaica Constabulary Forces communications arm confirmed that the police had found a headless body in St. Thomas about 2 p.m. yesterday and that the Yellows police are investigating. Indicom not involved in probing GDF soldiers' death. The Independent Commission of Investigations has indicated it has no legal interest in the shooting death of Private E.J. Domville, despite a Jamaica Defense Force statement yesterday indicating that authority over the probe into the soldier's death was with the commission and the police. Domville, 20, was reportedly shot in the face during an alleged shootout with armed thugs last Friday in Denham Town, Kingston where he was assigned to a zone of special operations. When contacted by the news yesterday, Indicom Commissioner Hugh Faulkner requested a copy of the JDF statement issued it to the media. Indicom had responded to a report of discharge of firearm by the security forces we went on the scene, including our forensic personnel. Initial investigations were done, and what seems to have been the case was a matter where a murder took place, which is a matter for the police, Faulkner said, after reviewing the JDF statement. 
He said Indicom's early investigation did not appoint it to a killing for which the security forces were the cause. In these instances, and consistent with the Indicom Act, then the police can investigate. We would have responded once there is a discharge of firearm, which we did. If it was a civilian who had died, and the JDF or JCF jointly operated in causing that death, then it would be our mandate, he said. The JDF's statement came after Domville's mother. In a report published by the news, claimed that there was a lack of transparency around the death of her son. Reynolds said she did not believe that her son died in a shootout with the criminals and complained that the JDF had not been upfront with her, only providing words of sympathy and assigning someone to plan Domville's funeral. In its statement yesterday, the JDF said members of the leadership of the Jamaica Regiment and the Chaplaincy Department had met with the next of kin and other family members to offer any assistance necessary. Principals anxious to complete replacement of teachers a week before school. Alfred Thomas, principal of Brownstone High in St. Anne, has less than a week to fill nine vacancies on his teaching staff after facing the bulk of teacher resignations in late August. However, he is not very optimistic that he will be able to complete this task in time for the reopening of school on September 2 and is anxious about the impact it will have on the teaching and learning process. I am especially worried for the sciences. We have lost our physics teacher. We have lost our chemistry teacher, the science head of department going on vacation leave, and we are yet to fill his position, integrated science and biology. It is really concerning, he told the news. Thomas further outlined that he was trying to fill the space left by six teacher resignations, two teachers who have gone on leave, and one teacher who has moved on to another job. The subject areas affected also include mathematics, auto mechanics, English language and English literature, physical education, and industrial arts. So far, he said, he has only been able to recruit an agricultural science teacher and is in the process of filling an English language and English literature position. Thomas said he was also seeking to engage a Cuban teacher to teach a chemistry at the two-shift school. Stating that this is the first time his school is experiencing the loss of so many teachers, Thomas, who has been principal of the school for nine years, lamented the many times potential teacher replacements confirmed for job interviews but failed to show up. Last week, we had interviews. We shortlisted four persons for the English language. They all confirmed, only to not turn up for the interview. We shortlisted for integrated science and human and social biology. Three persons confirmed. None of them turned up for the interview. We shortlisted two for physical education. They confirmed. None turned up, he shared. At Yellows High School in St. Thomas, Principal Mark Malabfer is trying to fill vacancies for a literacy teacher, three science teachers, a technical and a vocational and education and a training teacher, and a physical education teacher before school reopens. He noted that a combination of resignations and a vacation leave has left him with a strained staff of 69 to start the school year. Like Thomas, Malabver said he had a shortlisted teachers for the post who then withdrew their interest at the last minute. Frustrated, he contended that the teacher shortage in the system is exacerbated by the Ministry of Education and Youth's response. Guys, thank you for watching. See you this evening at 6 p.m. for another news update.